The historiography of the First World War in the air continues to be dominated by the so-called flying ace, the relatively few men who ever took on the enemy one-on-one -on -one in aerial combat. These representations, even in recent works, are typically of teenagers, barely out of their posh public schools, with tiny numbers of flying hours, having been schooled in a training system that killed more of them than the Germans managed to do themselves. Well, by researching recruitment and training in the Royal Flying Corps, I'll be able to challenge some of these existing narratives and potentially to demolish some myths, particularly with regard to their training. Only 8% of the 291,000 men in the Royal Flying Corps in November 1918 would ever have set foot in an aircraft. They were not then all pilots and observers. In fact, they were mainly mechanics. They were riggers. They were sailmakers. They were coppersmiths. They were blacksmiths. They were drivers. They were the men who kept the Royal Flying Corps functioning. And of these 92%, almost nothing has been written. My research will examine how prevalent such trades even were in 1914. There was never conscription into the Royal Flying Corps. So how on earth did they oversee a thousandfold increase in numbers in only four years? I will look in detail at the backgrounds of approximately 2,000 men, officers, NCOs and men from the ranks. I'll be looking at where they were from, how they were schooled. I'll be looking at why they joined the Royal Flying Corps. I'll be looking at how they joined the Royal Flying Corps. And already from this analysis, it's very clear the tally-ho image of the Royal Flying Corps is nothing other than a nonsense. On training, this research will, for the first time, give an accurate portrayal of the British flying training system in the First World War. I will examine over 250 logbooks, looking at how many hours individual pilots had before they were sent to the lines to take on the Germans. I've been through every casualty record of every Royal Flying Corps officer killed during the First World War and examined how many of them were killed during their training. I can tell you already that the answer is not the more than 50% portrayed in many books. In fact, it's not even half of that. In summary then, I hope that my research will challenge some of the existing narratives with regard to the men of the Royal Flying Corps. I hope too it potentially will stop the denigration of the British flying training system and the men who administered it. Their, their achievements in a period of technological and tactical revolution warrant a proper judgment and my research will provide that. I thank you for listening today and I hope you share my enthusiasm.